Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters. My name is Adam Torres, and if you'd like to apply to be a guest on the show, just head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, so I have Sarah Comstock on the line. She is a scientific consultant at GS Biomark and also a science professor at Corbin University. Sarah, welcome to the show. Thank you, Adam. It's nice to be here. All right, Sarah. So excited to have you on the show today. Um, we'll talk more about your work, of course, of what you're doing at uh, Corbin University. And then also where we will be talking about really COVID testing, um, what that looks like going forward. I know um, in California, uh, things are changing a bit. I know in Oregon, where you're at, they are as well. Um, and so excited to get into that uh, and into your work and research. But before we do that, um, we'll start this episode the way that we start them all with our Mission Matters Minute. So, Sarah, we at Mission Matters, we amplify stories for entrepreneurs, executives, and experts. That's our mission. Sarah, what mission matters to you? Well, Adam, like you said, I wear many hats with GS Biomark. I believe that COVID testing should be easily accessible and affordable to everyone. It matters to me that we make uh, testing like this available to anyone who needs it anytime without roadblocks. Testing can prevent outbreaks, hospitalizations, and deaths, and should be a top priority. And with saliva direct, it's easy and it's affordable. Scientists at Yale developed a way to bring testing to everyone, and it's my mission to help them expand their reach. Mm -hmm. Sometimes Hospitals and labs are intimidated by the idea of high complexity molecular testing, but I actually want to show them a path forward with the assistance from GS Biomark. And um, yeah, that's my mission with GS Biomark. I feel like we have a little bit of feedback. Is that on me or can you? Um, I don't, I'm not hearing any on my end. Yeah. Um, no, uh, let's see. Yeah. So, um, well, first off, um, Awesome. Love bringing on uh, mission-based uh, individuals to share why they do what they do. So glad. And we'll, we'll go into GS Biomark and, and Saliva Direct a little bit more. But I mm -hmm. think just to get us started, let's talk a little bit more about, about your background, really how you got started. So I understand you're, you're a science professor at Corbin University. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Corbin University is a small liberal arts university in Salem, Oregon. Uh, so that, if anyone knows Oregon, that's like an hour south of Portland. And I've been at Corbin for the past 10 years. Um, I got my degree in biology and I teach molecular biology and physiology. So a lot of my research before COVID um, focused on obesity and diabetes and that sort of thing and the way molecular biology interacts with physiology. So I studied that and how it affected humans. And then um, I also teach a lot of students who want to go on to be doctors or nurses at Corbin. So that's kind of my background. Um, and I've been doing uh, molecular biology research, specifically PCR, which is the test we use to test for COVID um, for 20 years now. I graduated with my undergraduate degree from Biola University down in Los Angeles and then started working at Oregon Health Science University. My very first experiments were PCR-based, uh, which is what you use to test for COVID. So that's kind of like when I found out that COVID testing or this whole pandemic was happening, I started reading all this stuff back in March of 2020. And I was like, oh my gosh, it's all PCR-based. I've been doing this for 20 years. This is what I teach wow. all my students how to do. This is just standard molecular biology uh, that I've been doing for 20 years. Yeah. Well, wow, it's uh, when, when you say you've been doing that for 20 years, I think it's interesting. And I think that is um, um, one of the reasons why I guess that, um, you know, Saliva Direct and, and GS Biomarg, you know, chose you to be a consultant on, the, on this project. So maybe tell us a little bit more about how, how that relationship evolved. So it's kind of a, a long story, but um, first, I approached my local hospital um, right after I found out the pandemic had was starting, and we my hospital is a rural hospital. It's about 15 minutes outside of Salem, and we serve a lot of rural communities. And I knew that because they weren't a large hospital, they wouldn't have access to testing very easily. 
So I went over there and I brought all my equipment in the back of my truck over to the hospital and offered, <laughs> well, I offered first. And then when they said, yes, I brought my equipment over and offered to develop an uh, in-house COVID test. So mm -hmm. that wouldn't have to deal with uh, supply chains or the fact that everything was going to get rerouted, rerouted to the bigger hospitals or the bigger states and that sort of thing. And then shortly after that, um, I started running Saliva Direct, which was developed by Yale. And there's some smart people at Yale that know what they're doing. Um, so I liked theirs better than my own test because it's saliva based. And then right about that time, GS Biomark contacted me and um, they were super helpful. They um, helped us get the supplies we needed, even when there were supply chain shortages, the reagents we needed, all that sort of thing. We decided to use them. And because I had already started doing Saliva Direct, I mm -hmm. was helping all these other hospitals locally and actually in some various states to start implementing their own Saliva Direct testing because I wanted to, because it's an easy test. I feel like a lot of people get overwhelmed with the idea of trying to develop this molecular testing and it's, it's not that hard. So I was already helping. And then GS Biomark asked me to come in and act as a consultant for them as they helped other hospitals and labs start saliva direct testing. So, so that's what we did is pretty simple. I also, there's a lot more to it. We also ended up being the test, the testers for our athletic league. So Corbin University uh, wasn't, we weren't allowed to play in the fall of 2020, but they were able to start playing in the spring of 2020 as long as they had regular COVID testing, which is incredibly expensive. So I ended up testing um, athletes in their athletic league, all of them pretty much so all the athletes in Corbin's Athletic League. So it was 11 schools in three or four states, actually, Washington, uh, Idaho, uh, Oregon, and Montana, and uh, sometimes California as well. And people would send their saliva from all over, um, and I ended up testing their the athletes as well. So. Wow, so you were a busy woman. Your lab was going crazy right like, like you're yeah, it was really fun though it was yeah it was fun it was really neat to be able to do something that made life almost normal especially during that 2021 year when everything seemed to you know just kind of be on pause yeah. my students still got to participate in their sport and that was really neat so that is, that's amazing. Um, what were some of the challenges during this time period? Like, I'll, we'll, we'll come present day in a minute, but I want to I want to stick with that a little bit longer. Like, what were some of the challenges? Yeah, so some of the challenges were, so I was a teacher, right, um, or a professor, was just trying to figure out how we could do school. And after um, the spring of 2020, it was just trying to figure out how we could do school as normally as possible with all the restrictions. And Oregon, probably a lot like California and Washington is one of the more, was one of the more closed states. So there are a lot of rules. I had half my class online, half in person, and we'd switch every other day. And I'd have to make sure I engage those students online, which, I mean, if you're watching a class online, it's really hard to stay engaged. Yeah. So that was hard. Um, there, when in the lab itself, there'd be, surges of you know, we all remember this like mm -hmm. huge surges of covid and we'd get thousands of samples a day and then it would just drop off and there'd be nothing mm -hmm. you know and then back to thousands and then drop off again so that was it and then the athletic commissioner was he's a really nice guy but a little impatient so samples <laughs> would arrive and within two hours i'd be getting texts Sarah, are the samples done? Sarah, are the samples done? <laughs> so I was like, yeah, I'm working on them. <laughs> so, but we'd always get that stuff going. Um, it was, yeah. And I had um, six undergraduate research students helping me on my team and they were invaluable um, because they all had uh, either taken molecular biology with me or had some other like biochemistry type classes with me. And they were just all hands on deck, but it was tiring at times because. Yeah. You know, everyone was trying to have 
like some semblance of normal while things just didn't feel normal. So yeah. Yeah. I, I get it. And uh, one of the reasons I was excited to have you on the show today was not, of course, not just for your knowledge and everything else that you bring to the table, but I love bringing these stories to our audience of like all of these individuals, like it was the collective of people that mm-hmm. that made this made us, you know, to where we're at today and getting over this, um, the pandemic and everything else. I mean, COVID and we'll get into this, of course, you know, is it here to stay and all the other things of what testing looks like going forward. But I feel like you know, those, those assistants and those people that you've worked, you worked with your students that were helping yourself, mm-hmm. like all the people that it took to make us move forward as, as humans, right? Like, and to get back to our day-to-day life. I just think it's amazing. Like, it's great. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was tiring, but it was also just very rewarding to work with my students and the people in the lab uh, at San Diego Hospital who just, it was hours and hours and hours of hard work that was is also very fulfilling because, yeah, people got to, you know, get tested, know what was going on, not be in the dark and wondering. And it was really good to be able to provide a service to my rural community. We again, like I said, we're very rural and mo- most of the hospitals in the area just decided to only test their patients, whereas our hospital decided to just open up and test anyone and anyone, everyone who needed a test, which was wonderful being a part of that hospital that wasn't scared, but just stepped up to the plate as well. Yeah, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. Um, So you mentioned uh, affordability, like making Mm -hmm. things affordable. Um, Tell tell us a little bit more about that and how that works. And I I know with Saliva Direct, you mentioned that their solution, like tell us a little bit more about affordability and why that's so important. Yeah. You know, I would encourage uh, anyone listening or watching to go and check out Saliva Direct. I'm incredibly impressed with Ann Wiley, who's the principal investigator at Yale and her team. That really their goal was to develop a test that um, was readily available and affordable. And uh, then GS Biomark jumped on board. And honestly, it's about it costs about a fifth to a quarter of the price of other standardly available tests at the most. Some of them, it's like 10 percent the cost. It's much more affordable to use saliva direct testing than nearly any other um, commercially available PCR test. Um, It's about, this ends up being the cost itself about the same price as some of the antigen tests that you can just get over the counter at Walmart, which is wonderful because one of the biggest uh, impediments sometimes to uh, getting tested is just cost, you know, Um, and Specifically, uh, we did receive a grant from Oregon Public Health uh, to help with testing in six counties um, of vulnerable populations. And you can be a vulnerable population depending on uh, your racial status, but it can also be uh, income or other status as well, right? And we really made an effort to make it affordable um, so that that was not a barrier that was needed to be overcome for for testing. So, and I honestly, it's not us, it's GS Biomark and uh, Yale. Uh, so this Yale team is, that was their goal and their mission is to really make testing affordable. And how does testing, how's that going to, how do you see it relating like testing in general to like the workplace? Because it seems like as people go back to work, like all these things, it's going to, even though um, you know, COVID may be lightening up, but it might be, um, right when I say lightening up, it's going to be maybe like the flu, right? So we were, it's going to be here forever. We're going to have different variations, different things that happen. And now when we think about people going back to work, to me, it, so, it seems like the, the testing part of it is going to be like that much more crucial. Yeah. It, so the way we have it set up and really GS Biomark has the amazing uh, they, they've helped me design everything the way I need it. So I have barcodes on my tubes and stuff like that. But honestly, if you get sick and you can just get tested and know it's not COVID or know it's COVID and now I have to stay home for five days, you know, that would change everything. That's what was so frustrating to me right at the beginning, because I thought, you know, back in 2020, if testing was affordable, affordable and accessible, we could have been out of this so much sooner. So I have testing, well, 
I have five children, um, ages 12 to 17 in my home, right? And they, anytime they get sick, they spit in a tube and I test them, right? And if we know what's going on, right? And it just made it, oh, it's not COVID. He's got a cold. Probably should stay home anyway so he doesn't give everyone his right. cold. But we, we knew like within a day what was going on, right? And so I feel like with people going back to work, if we can make testing readily available to them, they can make much more informed decisions. And I know we might talk about this a little later. One of the things that's going to happen is that COVID's here to stay. Yeah. Uh, however, we also have the flu, colds, RSV. We have all these other respiratory things. Some of it requires treatment. Some of it just requires you to hunker down and stay home for a day or two. And that's what's great about GS Biomark. And what we're doing is we're developing new tests that you can spit in a tube and I can test for COVID, flu, RSV. You can all in the same test. And so I can tell you, hey, you just have a cold, you know, take cold medicine and you'll be fine in a couple of days. Or, hey, you might need to get it treated. You might need to see a doctor. Here's what's going on. Right. Yeah. And so, yeah, I just think it, we're going to see regular waves of COVID like we see the flu. And getting a test is probably one of the best ways to deal with it. I feel like I should have been doing that before. You get a <laughs> cold and you want to know what it is or you want to know like that's a that's a that's a great thing, I think. Um, so tell me more about how why the, the, the connection between like these maybe different types of respiratory illnesses and things that may arise, like why that's so important. And this testing part is so important going forward. Well, so if you think about it, um, the flu we have today is the same flu that um, caused the worldwide p pandemic in uh, 1918, right? It's just slightly variable. And every year we'll have certain versions of the flu that are going to be worse or not so bad, right? So if we could test for that and just prevent, and, and, and the wonderful thing about Saliva Direct is I test. I know you have it. So if you did weekly screening, I would know you have it two days before you actually develop symptoms. I remember, I remember doing this with the athletic teams and coaches would call me up and they're like, Sarah, he's fine. He doesn't, the, the basketball player needs to play in the basketball game. He doesn't have COVID. I watch for a day. He will have it. And then the next day they'd start having symptoms. Right. And I got a few arguments from coaches. How COVID? Like, there's not how much COVID. Either you're you have it or you don't. It's not how pregnant are you. You're <laughs> just have it, right? And they're like, well, I don't know about that. But <laughs> that's the cool part about this testing is you can, if you did wanted to do weekly screening, we could find it uh, even before you started having symptoms. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, we actually received a grant from Oregon Public Health to do K-12 testing. And that's one of the things that we're actually able to do is we send home the GS Biomark kits with the kids. And once a week, they bring it back, drop it off in the school office. We run it the same day and we're able to tell them if they're free and clear or not. So this screening testing is actually incredibly effective. And research on the East Coast shows that it tends to reduce outbreaks by about 25%. So that's another option that we could actually do um, with employers if they wanted to, to prevent outbreaks in, in the workforce. And this could prevent outbreaks not only of COVID, but also flu and RSV, which are the more contagious respiratory viruses that you really want to avoid. Everyone's going to get a cold. It happens. There's not much you can do. Masks are coming off. And again, I have many children that live in my home. So there's colds running around all the time, right? But there's some that are much more worse or deadly or can be more deadly than others. Yeah. What kind of uh, what kind of feedback have you received on this? I'm just curious, just on the, the entire project, everything else along the way, because uh, other other than the the athletic the athletic department, who uh, by the way, I'm starting to like them a lot. <laughs> how, how, how COVID? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Okay. yesterday. laughs> no. <laughs> Oh, that's great. Uh, uh, 
what kind of feedback have you received from from this and from these efforts? Because I know I know the local community and just everything, even just the hospital opening up. I mean, it must have been like tremendous like support. Yeah, you know, it's kind of embarrassing. I'm going to tell you this. But I've kind of kept it on the download. Um, I was nominated for the Community Impact Award. I'm going to find out if I get it. Wow. Thursday for our community, which is really embarrassing. The other two, it was like, oh my gosh, I, I don't know who did it. We live in a small town, but it is kind of embarrassing that I have to go to this thing. The other two uh, nominees were actual a bank in the town and a hospital. And then me, which was pretty much like, oh my gosh, this is embarrassing. But I think they, it's not me and, and my, my team or my uh, lab likes to make fun of me because they are always like, oh, Sarah Comstock and her team. <laughs> that's hilarious. It's, but I think they're recognizing that there's this group of people that mm. stepped up and really tried to make a difference for their community. Um, so, and that community impact award is one of those things, right? Um, and yeah, but the feedback we've received, I mean, sometimes people are a little worried. Again, we live in a rural town, so it's a, they, a lot of different views on how the pandemic was handled, masking, all that sort of thing. But most people are um, pretty accepting and grateful. I, I'm usually the one that makes most of the phone calls for the K-12 program, partially because I have children that go I live in the same school district and go to school alongside them. And I talk through it with the parents and what you have to do. And at the end, even though I'm the one calling to tell them their kid has COVID, I usually get many, many thank yous, which wow. is surprising. <laughs> so I don't know. I I feel like there's been a lot of really good reception. Mm -hmm. uh, we're trying. I don't know. It's... <laughs> trying our best it's you don't always give people happy news but there's people are understanding that we're trying we're out there trying to support them and help them and help them live a more normal life yeah mm -hmm. it's great it's a, it's a great story so i know you're you're busy um with, with the five five kids uh your students all the students you teach um being at the center of pcr testing and you know to see i know i know you would have never hoped this nobody would but like COVID and outbreak but you just happen to be and have the specialty yeah. pcr testing you've been working out for 20 years so yeah. i mean just as a, as a professional and uh, as a technician i mean that's uh for you to be in that spot um, when we needed you so thank you um, but I have to ask, so, uh, so what's next? I mean, what's next for you? What kind of research you're working on? Like what's next? So the great thing about working with Geos Biomark directly and the suppliers is I, I kind of get to tell them what's next. Right. And so first, like I said, we're looking at uh, other respiratory, uh, diseases and trying to work with Yale to hope, um, they can help us with some development of that. Um, because GS Biomark works a lot with Yale and assists them um, and supplies them reagents and that sort of thing. Um, and then there's other tests that um, we're looking at that um, I will be working with GS Biomark to supply that have to do with like STIs and things like that, that sometimes just seem really expensive. It doesn't have to be that expensive. All of this can be so much more affordable um, to this the single payer right because that, some of that is not everyone has insurance not everyone has the health care um coverage that um some of us have right especially working at a hospital i have pretty great coverage but not everyone does and so that's what we're working on next is to try to get um new tests out and i my job is to assist labs in development of their own lab developed tests because I have the molecular biology expertise and I'm a teacher. I love teaching. And honestly, half of my job as a teacher is to be a cheerleader, to help people go, oh yeah, you're doing it right. Yeah, that, you're doing it okay. Because a lot of times when it's molecular biology, people get so nervous and you don't have to get nervous, right? So that's what's really great about my position with GS Biomark is I get to help and just give my expertise to these labs that need a little bit of expertise. And honestly, this is my cell phone. I get texts daily from lab directors or molecular biologists on, hey, how do I do this, right? And it it's wonderful to me to help with that expertise. Um, 
yeah, we're going to continue to expand into new testing um, and just to try to supply this in an affordable manner to other organizations. Fantastic. Well, uh, Sarah, if somebody's watching this and they want to follow your work, um, whether at Corbin University or they want to learn more about Saliva Direct, um, GS Biomark, I mean, what's the best way for people to follow up and to learn? So um, a couple of things. So for GS Biomark, you can go to gsbiomark.com. And then I'm supposed to give you our sales representative's email. So that's cbishop at gsbiomark.com. And then uh, for Corbin and me, um, our website is corbin.edu. And then me, myself, if you wanted to email me, that would be fun. Um, my email address is s for Sarah Comstock at corbin.edu. And I'd be Perfect. happy to talk and figure things out with people. Wonderful. And we'll put all that information in the in the show notes so that uh, our viewers can just uh, check it out and, and either shoot an email or go check out the websites as well. Um, and speaking of the viewers, if this is your first time with Mission Matters, we're a platform that's all about bringing on uh, entrepreneurs and experts and having them share why they do what they do, like what gets them excited, what gets them fired up and, and to get up. Uh, out of bed every morning and go out into the world and make a difference. If that is the type of content that you like and that excites you, uh, we definitely welcome you to hit that subscribe button because we have many more mission-based individuals coming up on the line and we don't want you to miss a thing. And uh, Sarah, um, congrats again on all the great work you're doing over there on the, on the award domination. I mean, all the other things and really just being a pillar in the community. I really appreciate you coming on the show and sharing your story. Thank you, Adam. I appreciate you having me.